I first came across Slade in the early 1970s and I saw them a few times live on the circuit. And I always thought they were an excellent, hard rocking, fun live band. But back then, there were so many good bands, you just couldn't keep up with all of them. Then around 1971, Glamrock hit the UK music scene. I'm pretty sure it was Mark Boland, front man of T-Rex, who kicked the whole thing off back in 71 with his appearances on the UK chart show Top of the Pops. He started wearing glitter under his eyes, eyeliner, he had this mass of corkscrew curls, sort of an androgynous appearance and as the months passed he would wear ever more flamboyant clothes. Now Slade aligned themselves to this movement and you probably wouldn't have put money on them getting any success because a few years back They'd been out and out skinheads. They'd had this kind of skinhead image. But give them their due, Slade managed to come up with hit after hit after monster hit. The songs were catchy, they were fun, and once you'd heard them, they stuck in your head for days. Slade's core audience ranged from kids, I guess they started as young as seven, eight years old, maybe even younger, and it kind of went up to teenagers about 15 or 16 years old. Now, the singles charts were pretty much ruled, I guess, from 71 to 73, 74 by Slade and Mark Boland. Yes, there are other big acts like Bowie and Elton John, but they were more album orientated. While they did have hit singles, it was Slade and T-Rex that ruled the singles charts. However, I guess by early 1974, Glamrock's popularity had started a slow and steady decline and Slade as a band were still popular though the days of their instant number ones, their smash it number one songs were gone. Then around mid-1974 it appeared that Slade were in talks to make a film, Slade in Flame. The rock music press at the time, especially in the UK, largely ignored Slade. The consensus of opinion was that they'd been a flash in the pan, it was just teeny bop music, and their days were over. The only thing I can remember reading at that time in the rock press is that the band were going to play themselves in a fictional band called Flame. The film and the accompanying soundtrack album were released in November 1974. Again, I can't remember reading hardly anything about any reviews in the music press. The only stories I did read were that it appeared that Slade's main audience, the teenagers, could not make head or tail of the film, and many had just walked out of the cinemas. So the film and the soundtrack album, the whole project seemed to be a complete disaster for the band, and I guess the idea in the beginning was that it was going to get them back into some sort of mass popularity, ended up doing the complete opposite. Now the band continued for many years and was still a hard working, very popular band, but the days of superstardom had gone. Recently I started doing some research for a glam rock video and you know you're searching through Google and this comes up, that comes up and I managed to find an article where the UK film critic, a very highly rated film critic, Mark Commode describes Slade in Flame as the Citizen Kane of British films. And I thought, blimey, is he having a laugh? A bit of a giggle? And I found Slade in Flame on YouTube and I had a peek. And you know what? I was absolutely stunned. I was expecting some 70s British style humour, some hijinks on the road, Got to throw a love story in or two. A bit of a jolly romp. No, it's a film that promotes Slade as a band. Not at all. It follows the journey of Flame, a fictional band from the 1960s. It follows their rise from obscurity to stardom and how they are used and abused by the music industry. Slade wanted to show the reality of being in a band being on the road and the corrupt side of the music business. It's a film that lifted the curtain on the seedy side of rock and roll. 
No wonder their teenage fans didn't really like this. For this wasn't a summer holiday or a hard day's night. You could almost smell those seedy nightclubs, the dives, the cheap beer, the cigarettes, the whiff of Old Spice aftershave, the sweet smell of desperation. I love the smell of desperation on a Saturday night. It smells like... I'd go so far as to call it one of the great 70s British movies. It's well worth a watch. The link will be in the description. Slade were worried how it would affect their careers. And sadly, back then in the 70s, it sure did. But the film and the superb soundtrack are among the best things they ever did. But Slade did have the last laugh. Every Christmas when they play, so here it is, Merry Christmas. If you listen very carefully as the song begins to fade on the outro, you can hear the distant, very distant sound of cash registers racking up even more royalties. But, like I say, I'll put a link in the description to the movie and please tell me what you think because I think you'll be surprised. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.